Okay. So the access method in in 802.11 is um, called DCF, and the word DCF is not here, but I think it's on the pre next one. Um, and um, so basically, what they do is they have three different inter interframe spacing between the frames. How long they have to be uh, empty? Shortest interframe spacing SIFs. Then the medium one is called PIFs, and then the long one is called DIFs. Distributed point coordination function and the shortest function. SIFs is used when you want to send something very critical, and most critical things are. Anybody remembers now from last time? What are the three most critical things you have to send in SIFs? Right, so basically request to send RTS, CTS, and ACK. Right, good. All right, so those are sent at SIFs. And then PIFs is for um, you know any real time stuff, there is a time criticality, and you generally reserve in advance. And so you are given a time, and, and that is the time which is during which it will be reserved. And then diffs is everybody else, and they, everybody else has to follow this random back off thing, which we'll discuss a little bit more in a detail. So PCF part is already talked about. This is the reserve period, but after the reserve period is over, then the contention period starts, and this is called DCF, distributed coordination function. And um, in distributed coordination function, you have to see if the medium is empty. If it is empty, then you start. If it is busy, then you you know you don't start at all. And if you collide, if it is empty and you collide, then you draw a random number, right? So coordinator sends a beacon. So the beacon is sent at this point, and everybody knows what in the beacon actually it will say what is the time duration for this. And actually, there will be a lot of stuff in Beacon. But one of the things would be how much is the contention free period. So these guys will not try during that period at all. When this is over, then they will um, basically sense the medium. So Beacon frame. And, um, and, and actually, among the period here, there is a, in, the, in the contention free period, there is a small period during which you can say I want PCF access, and um, that is a polling period. Basically, so you tell I need, and then next time probably you'll get it. You probably will not get it in the same period, but in the next cycle you will get it. So the contention-free period will be, if, if this is too much, then it might be less and less and less, and this whole cycle is fixed. Super frame is fixed, and that is also announced in the beacon. All right, so DCF back off. <coughs> now here's the back off algorithm, which is similar to what is in the Ethernet. And you keep three variables. Actually, we discussed this slide, I remember from the last time. So you have three variables, nav. Nav is a timer that you set to the whatever is time in the frame. Each frame in the header has a time. It says, this is how long you should be quiet. I mean, other people should be quiet. And, um, and that time includes not only the frame, but also the Acknowledgement and the in between shifts or whatever you need, right? So if I am sending an RTS, the time in RTS would be not just the time for RTS, but the time for RTS, the gap, CTS, the gap, the frame, the gap, and acknowledgement. Whole time will be an RTS. So if you hear an RTS, then you have to just not do anything for that much time. So that is where what goes into. So every frame has a time which indicates when that activity will end, not just the frame will end, right? So if it is RTS, the activity will continue to the ACK. If it is CTS, the activity will continue to the ACK, and the frame activity will continue to the ACK, and the ACK is, will end in ACK. Right? So you understand this is the total time. So that is NAV function, okay? Now, these two are used the back of count and the window are used only if you run into a collision, that you send an RTS and you do not get this. So th th I'm going to describe that in the next slide, but the key thing here is, uh, okay, so I mean, the thing is you draw a random number back off between zero and CW, congestion window. So you start with one, then you go to three, then you go to you know four, uh, seven and so on and so forth. You just double the window every time. So zero to one, you draw a random number, 
and you wait that much time and then you sense the medium at that time sense the medium at that time okay if the medium becomes busy during backup the timer is stopped and a new nav is set after the nav expires then you back off your back off continues so here is another little rule and this is important to understand so let's say you 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 you, you draw random number 1 0 and 1023 all right and you got the number 5 500 okay so now you are not going to do anything until 500 but while you are waiting you hear a frame somebody sends an rts and they send a cts and they say okay the system will be busy for next you know 5 seconds so for that 5 second your back off is stopped i mean it's actually paused so you will continue your back off after that 5 second is over so your total back off is 5 seconds plus whatever happened in between. Is that clear to everybody? So your back off timer continues. If you are in the back, back off and somebody else comes on, then you start your back off timer and follow them. Right? Once they are done, then your back off starts again. You don't have to redraw another number after they are done. Right? Your previous number is still active. So initially, and after each successful transmission, CW is equal to CW min. So in the beginning, it is CW min. So I said 0 and 1, but most likely the CW min could be 3. Now, this is an example. You could set it to 1. You could set it to 5, I mean 7, whatever, right? So CW min, if it is 3, then it will start from, from um, 0 to 3, okay? Random number. And CW max is... Um, is when you stop. So if you reach 127, which is actually um, not 1000 that we were talking about, it's just 127. If you reach 127, then you don't go up. So this is like truncated back off. Anybody remembers truncated back off anywhere else? Anybody remembers back off anywhere else in the wired networks? Eh? Yeah. Ethernet. Ethernet has a truncated back off and it truncates at 10. 2 raised to 10 is the maximum you will back off. Okay, 10.24. After that, you don't, if, if you, after 10th attempt, you just give up. You say, I, and this network is not usable. I mean, then, you know, packet is lost or, you know, you just start, you know, new packet or something. Okay. So here it is 127, CW max and CW min, right? And, um, so you will your congestion window will never be more than cw max you see after every time you double it so you start with let's say three next time it will be three times two which is six plus one seven right congestion window could be seven and then seven plus two times one is 15 you know it's basically two raised to n minus one okay all the way up to cw max which is 127 now in this example though Right? This is not the standard. The standard doesn't say that you cannot go over 127. But in this example, this network manager, person who is actually running the network, decided that we will have 3 and 127. So these are not standard values. Standard allows you any values, but you know this is the this is the parameter. Typical parameter values. For, and different files could use different values. So for um, for this um, uh, DS file, typical slot time is 20 microseconds. So US is micro, mu, and sys is 10 microsecond, and min is 30, and max is 1023. For frequency hopping, it is 10 micro, 50 microseconds, and so on and so forth. Okay. Now these were the original. Um, original 5, right, in 11, but then 11a changed it to 9 microseconds and so on, and 11b changed it to that, 11g changed it to that. Now, I wouldn't remember these values myself, so I wouldn't expect you to remember, but I just want you to know, be able to know that there is a variation, okay? Different files, different networks, different things will have a different recommended values, and these are again typical values. These are not the values that are manda mandated, so these are not required values, these are recommended value. 
and um, and people would use anything different depending upon how they feel their network goes but works better or not. PIFs is generally sys plus one slot time, so they just leave one slot time, and this is two slot time, and the slot times are given here. A slot time is twenty microsecond and what nine microseconds. So these are typical values. Now, so this is called virtual carrier sense. You see, the carrier sense is that when you go to the wire and you check every second, right? But here is virtual because we really don't go to the wire. We have this nav set timer set. And then the timer expires. Then only we go and see the wire, and actually wireless in this case. You see the medium only after the nav expires. The so nav actually makes it virtual. So I'm going to say it again one more time that each frame has a duration ID, which indicates how long the medium will be busy. So RTS has the duration of RTS, SIF, CTS, SIF, frame, SIF, and act, and CTS has the duration of this, and so on and so forth. And all stations keep the nav, and the station do not sense the channel until the nav becomes zero. And therefore, this is a virtual carrier sense, right? If you were sensing it, why don't you sense it all the time? Can anybody think of a reason why one would not sense it all the time? Power. Yeah, you could go to sleep for that nav, <laughs> and they do. So basically, energy, the battery, is the reason. Is that basically now you know that this other guy is going to give his 10-hour lecture. So why? What I'm going to do for 10 hours? I'm going to sleep, right? That's what it is. <laughs> is that everybody else goes to sleep? Only the sender and the receiver have to be active.